Your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man is having problems with felines. Here's a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Spider-Man Classics Marvel's Black Cat. Black Cat is the most confident, cunning burglar the world has ever seen. Donning a black costume and mask, heiress Felicia Hardy changes into the superhero persona and prowls the streets with Spider-Man at her side. Here, Kitty Kitty, before we get a closer look at Felicia Hardy, a.k.a. the Black Cat, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall the Black Cat figure stands. So I'm going to take the tape measure right to the very top of what I believe to be is her head. I'm going to stop it right there. According to the readouts, Black Cat stands just a little over 6 inches, 6.1 to be exact. We can switch that to centimeters, revealing that Black Cat is 15 and a half or 15.5 centimeters tall. Because I've already done a review of him, we'll move over the black cat and we'll bring in a slightly wobblier Mysterio. Now, of course, Mysterio does come rather handy because he does have those little constructs that you can attach to his legs, it does make him a lot more stable, and it kind of give you an idea of how they stack to one another. Surprisingly, black cat seems to be about the same height as Mysterio. I almost would have imagined her to be slightly smaller. Looking at the accessories that come in clue with black cat, one of which happens to be a black hat. Fancy that. A little tiny little feline to go along with Felicia Hardy. It kind of looks like he should be swatting something. Like a little tiny mouse, a little ball of yarn, or just a little tiny rubber ball. It looks like he should be doing something. Because there's nothing actually that comes included with him, it just looks like, and I'm assuming it's a male. It could very well be a female. But I mean, like the way that it's sculpted, it really looks like it should have something along with it. And yet, sadly, it doesn't. I guess you could just sort of pretend it sees something. Maybe it sees the laser of my, my new tape measure. I don't know. We could just have a little bit of fun trying to imagine what Mr. Whiskers is actually playing around with. The detailing for the cat, you know, for its size is actually really good. You can see it actually looks like he's got a little tiny smile, Mr. Whiskers, with a little tiny smile. I like also the coloring of that metallic green that they used for the eyes. But look at the big smile on his face. Oh, that makes me happy. A little tiny cat with a big smile on his face. It comes included with that. She also comes included, of course, with her whip. Now, the whip is all softer plastic, of course, with the handle being done in black. I think, actually, this part has been painted. I don't feel it's white plastic. It seems awfully white to be plastic. I feel like it's actually the handle is the true color. And then, of course, the, this part of the whip has actually been painted white. I could be completely wrong by that. But I will tell you, though, the little claw on the end of it has been painted nicely in silver. As I said, it's a very pliable a pliable whip, and you can, of course, put that into her hand. Now, unfortunately, when you're looking at the figure, there's only really one way that you can put the whip into her hand. This other hand seems way too open of a grip to actually properly hold the whip. Even when you are putting it into her hand, you will want to be careful of the fingers. Like, the fingers are a very soft, pliable plastic. I find it actually helps to take the whip and feed it from the top instead of actually trying to force it from the front because then you're less susceptible to actually bending those fingers. But man, those fingers are awfully soft. You can have her holding the whip like this. There really is no other place that you can actually store the whip on her. Unlike a Catwoman, for example, it would have had like a little hook that you could loop the whip onto. Black Cat, a different feline, uh, doesn't actually have the necessary means to actually hold the whip in other than just the one hand. If you are curious, yes, you can take the other whip, put it into her ha hand here. But like I said, it's, there's just nothing holding on to it. It really more or less looks like it's supposed to be like a clawing hand or a gestured hand. I'm going to go ahead and put the whip to the side. And actually, you know what? We'll put the cat over there as well, just in case I actually knock him onto the floor. That would be so sad. Getting a closer look at the black cat. The only one I really can compare it to. And I actually have had a couple of black cats over the years of collecting Marvel Legends. But the earliest one that I remember is the black cat that had the horrendous blue that was painted all in her hair, all in the fur. Basically, all the areas and aspects that were white were all added with an additional light-colored blue. And boy, did that ever disrupt... It wasn't really a great figure to start off with. It was a bad-looking head sculpt, but it did really move, make things a lot worse by the fact that they had to add so much additional blue. I will say it's a nice, pleasant surprise to see that they didn't go this route. Although there is something slightly jarring about her hair. I don't know if it's the coloring that they used or the fact that it just maybe needed another coat of paint. But the hair almost comes across like it's been covered in glue. And maybe the coloring of the plastic is actually still seeping through. It really is a weird-looking color. 
I don't know if it's just the case that they actually used a darker plastic and then they just painted over top of it, but that sort of looks like what it is right there. Like there's all these little patches that don't really look like it's actually white. Unless what they may have done is taken white plastic and then just ruined it by adding a brush of paint over top of it. Kind of gives it a little slight bit of a grayish tint. Something isn't jiving about the hair for me. I mean, the hair is sculpted nicely, but I feel like it's ruined a little bit by the way that they applied the paint to it. What I am happy with, though, is the, the head sculpt. That is a stunning looking head sculpt for Black Cat. And I think it by now I may have had three Black Cats in my collection. But this one is definitely a very pretty looking portrait. I do like the little bit of uh, shading that they added around the eyes. Just a nice light color of pink. Of course, you've got the mask going on there as well. And a different color of pink applied to her lips. Not sure if you can actually see it or not, but if you tilt the head ever up so slightly, she does also have a little spiked choker around her neck. That is very cool, the fact that they did that. Now, when it does come to the articulation on the figure, I find like that collar does get in a little bit of way in the way of things. As you're twisting it, I almost feel like the collar wants to get stuck and hung up in there on the inside of her head. But I do like the fact that they didn't include that. That's a nice touch. Of course, you've got the fur on the sides of the, the hands, the arms here. And I don't really mind that this has a lot of gray, but somehow doesn't work as well for me here, at least on the head. The fur is a nice touch, though, on the hands. And obviously, as you can see with the gloves, the, gl the top part, and especially the hand, is still kept to that white, very bright white color. By adding the contrast of that little bit of gray, boy, does that ever really pop. And I really like the contrast of the, of the two colors side to side. The majority of her outfit really is just relying on the black plastic. There is a little bit of paint, of course, that's been applied to the opened end of her top here. But all the rest of it is just relegated to black plastic. I sort of feel like the legs, maybe that could be one different thing is that I feel like the legs may have been painted because as you look at it with the light hitting in a certain way it seems to reflect the light differently than say this part right here don't mean to be drawing your attention to right here but like even like the arms seem like they're slightly shinier whereas the mid torso area seems like it's just plastic I'm not even sure really why they would have not just used black plastic for the legs because clearly they used it here not really sure why they didn't use it for the rest of the body of course, we've got the fur down below there on the bottom of the boots or tops of the boots, and they're painted nicely as well in the gray. It's an overall well-constructed figure, making use, I'm sure, of a repeated female body that they've used for other Marvel Legend female characters. The only thing about this particular body build is that she's very, very narrow here in the waist, very narrow in the stomach. Not quite the proper feminine proportions, if you ask me, but then she gets really wide here in this lower part of her body. Now, of course, they were supposed to continue the trend of the natural shape of the body. And, of course, you've got the curvature right here, slightly wider out here on the hips. But, unfortunately, the way that the legs are pegged into place, it does give her legs an unnatural additional sizing, where they look a little like they stick out on the either side of her, well, her assets. Uh, as a whole, like, the figure doesn't look too bad, but, it, it, like I said, it's a little jarring right here. This is the part that little, little bit throws it off for me when I'm looking at the figure. Up here doesn't work so bad. Here I would admit, yeah, the waist is a little on the narrow side. That stomach is awfully flat and awfully narrow. And then again, it broadens itself out again when you're looking at the thighs. Uh, just in case you are curious, she does have peg holes in the undersides of the, of the feet. So in case you did want to pose Black Cat outside the norm of just having her standing straight, you can definitely pull that off by making use of a display stand. Sadly, none of these figures have come with display stands yet. And really, Marvel Legends isn't the line that really, when you think about it, does come with display stands to start off with. They've never really done it. They've done it, I think, in a few instances. But nine times out of ten, they really never come included with display stands. And that's a bit of a shame. So let's check out the articulation now on Black Cat. For her head, it rotates back and forth. They did try, it seems, to give her slightly softer plastic for her hair, but it's just too dense. It means it really does get hung up when you are wanting to rotate the head back and forth. Hinging the head up and down is basically null and void. You can hinge it just a little bit, but not really a lot, much, really not much at all. She has an upper torso ball joint, so you can rotate the torso all the way around quite easily, quite comfortably. And then when it comes to her arms, you can bring the arms up to a full 90 degree angle bend, just like that. You can bring the arms all the way around as well. She has a swivel, not necessarily at the bicep. You'll see that the bicep is the same mold as the shoulder, but she does still have a bend in the elbow. Now, I'm not really sure on this particular figure if there's just an excessive amount of paint that's been built up in the joint. You can see like there's a little bit of a flaking right there. It looks like it just sharpened a pencil. 
little bit of pain, I think, is really what's building up here on the joints of the arms. Now, for the time that I've had the figure out of the packaging, I kept trying to do this, hoping that it would free it up. But it still seems like there's a lot of gunked up paint added up into that joint, where I just can't quite bend the elbow as well as I would hope. As for the hand articulation, the hands rotate all the way around. Did I already mention that these are the only hands that come included with the figure? I don't think I did, but if I did, if I didn't, she, these are the only hands that she comes included with. The hands rotate all the way around, and there's also a hinge joint on there as well. That's actually just a peg joint, but you can see right there, there's the hinge joint. Again, a lot of unnecessary plastic built up with paint. All that paint is filled in those little grooves, so it results in when you are moving the figure, especially on the hands, really, that's the worst. When you are moving the hands, all these little shavings of white paint just start flaking off the figure. When it comes to the legs, the legs split out. Uh, you can go forward and back perfectly fine, perfectly easy on the legs. She has a swivel three quarters of the way up the thigh that allows the leg to rotate all the way around. She has a double hinge on the knee. Uh, then when it comes to the boots, no articulation. This is all basically just molded to the lower leg part of her leg. And when it comes to the feet, luckily there is no built up paint. Uh, adding onto the actual hinge joint. I guess they probably just use the white plastic because there is little to no paint. There's actually no paint on that hinge joint. You can move the feet back and forth this way. And she also does have an ankle pivot as well. Um, I don't mind the look of Black Cat. She overall looks pretty good. She has some construction issues, more or less relying on this particular build of body where proportionately things just don't add up. Really, like I said, narrow looking tummy. I mean, she's got a very thin, flat stomach and then very broad in the legs. Proportionally, I don't think she would look like an average human being. That's, of course, the proportions of what we get with a lot of female characters from comics. It does look a little jarring when you look at the figure because she is very, very wide here, very narrow here, and very wide again in the shoulders. Well, I will say, though, to her credit, she's definitely got one of the prettier looking face sculpts that we've gotten with a black cat figure. The positive points I like about Black Cat, number one and top of the list, has to be the head sculpt. By far, is definitely one of the better head sculpts we've gotten for a Black Cat. And right next to that is, I would say, the sculpting of her hair. The hair is nicely done, and it falls and forms to her body the way that hair should do. But then, of course, you ruin some of that sculpt with the paint applications, which I would get, I would say is the number one strike going against this figure. Not really even talking about the proportions of her body, because, of course, that just boils down to the mold that they decide to go with. But the paint really, I feel, lets this figure down. As good as I like the hair, I think it gets ruined by the paint application to it. Whether they've used a darker plastic and just applied white paint to it, or rather the opposite, taken white plastic and tried their best to add a little bit of contrast and colors, I gotta say, it just doesn't work. Her hair Hair doesn't look natural in the way it's been painted and it actually just looks like somebody took some some white glue and just dumped it all over her head and it's slowly starting to dry i really don't like the coloring that they did for the hair the rest of the coloring for the body is pretty good the fur on the arms the fur on the legs the boots at least and then of course you can talk a little bit about the fact that when it came to the molding clearly you can see that the mold of the figure at least in the torso is just regular black plastic but what they have done for the arms and the legs is that they've painted those in in black. It really does ask the question, why wouldn't they just have sculpted, not maybe the head, obviously, but the rest of the body? Why not just sculpt it all in black plastic and then just paint the things like the gloves and the fur? I would think that would be a lot less, less involved, at least from a production standpoint, because the end result is both the legs and the arms are a lot shinier. It's not quite the same black as the rest of her torso. Again, it makes logical sense to me why they just didn't paint the gloves and the fur instead. Other problems, of course, with painting things like limbs, especially in the elbows, those joints just don't bend as well as they should. And it's all boiling down to the fact that if they had just left the plastic being black, I think it would have been just a lot easier if they just painted the gloves and the fur white. But that's not what they ended up doing. Still, though, it's a nice looking black cat if you can kind of overlook the proportion issues, especially around the stomach area and how it jets out to the thighs. Obviously, a normal human being isn't going to look like this. This is what we get with a comic inspired black cat. It does throw the proportions off ever so slightly because she is very much wider in the waist area, much wider in the thigh area and scrawny and, and really malnourished, actually, in the torso, especially in the stomach. You can really see it here in final looks. Short of that, though, I think the head sculpt is the thing that saves this figure the most, and the fact that she comes included with a little tiny black cat. 
The only thing I can think of, the reasoning why they sculpted the black hat the way that they did, looking like it's supposed to be swatting at something, is here what I'm doing here in Final Oaks by having the whip draping down. Kind of looks like the cat is supposed to be swatting at it. I don't know if that's the intended plan, but that's probably going to be the way that I'm going to display the figure for myself. Have you picked up Black Cat? Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. And what do you think are the positives and the negatives of this figure? Also, if you're new to this channel and you're liking all the content you're, you're seeing on a regular basis, because we're always putting out new content here, Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But let's just say you're that individual that's now getting in on the game now, and you're only now finding these videos. Make sure to follow along this channel and see all the exploits going on Monday to Friday that you're hitting that subscribe button down below. You're turning the bell notification on. And of course, you're coming back to this channel all those days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And it seems lately too that we've been also posting videos on the weekend as well. There's no time off for this humbled reviewer. There's always new content coming your way. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.